Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and uh, I'd like to just say a big shout out to everybody who subscribed new old keep hanging in there it should start getting interesting now and um, this morning Sunday morning we have a gearbox felt like the uh, what's it name the fanfare for the common man starting up this morning when it was delivered it's Sunday morning can't grumble at that can we so uh, I'm just going to get a socket set together we just need to just loosen these off and pull off the uh, the gearbox end plate which is an 11 should be able to do that with just the, the screwdriver attachment and an 11 and um, we can discuss how well the first thing we're going to do is look at the gear um, the gears themselves in relation to the lay shaft the reason why I'm starting there is because there's um, some gearboxes um, which don't come up over the lay shaft and they're hard to shim <clears throat> This one should do like every other gearbox should um, come up over. So that's our last one. And I'm hoping we can just pull this off. We don't need to use the uh, extractors in any way. It has been on for a while, hasn't it? So let's get rid of these spring washers. If you can remember, none of these were tightened down because obviously we want we want them in good condition to use when we're building up the gearbox um, <clears throat> when you're shimming a gearbox like I'm going to be doing uh, my recommendation is don't use the Christmas tree which is that part don't put that in because you've got to keep pulling the end plate over the bearings got to keep being pulled over and you need to keep using extractors um, while you're shimming up um, I'm just I'm wondering if I can just get that with the screwdriver. Let's see if I can I might put hammer under there and and see. Yeah, that's loose. There we go. I don't know if we can see that or not. So I'm just giving it a wiggle and putting my thumb pressure on there on the end of the lay shaft. And it's starting to come. There we go. I'll try and take it off evenly right there's our gearbox end plate if you remember I'll put the roller bearing in and there should be a small um, bearing liner um, in here but what I want to do first is just put the gears in so if you remember fourth gear towards you boss towards you they all need cleaning up yet and all the other oil cutaways go towards the rear hub. It's the easiest way to uh, put a gearbox in. So cutaways towards there. And then first gear, which is not imperfect. Um, it's had a few uh, scrapes with the kickstart shaft. That's where people keep the, um, the gear lever down, basically. And it's engaged. And because it clicks in it's scored a couple of places uh, right that is just proud it's uh, can i show you this where the end of the lay shaft is and where the gearbox is on some of them this lower so the shim basically you're never going to be able to shim it up properly if i could just grab a shim let me take that christmas tree out of the way put our box out of the way and just grab a shim um, yeah we'll start start with uh, the average one you should start with which is a two mil so that's a brand new two two mil one and if we stick that on the end do you see what I'm saying that has to uh, be able to stop the gears moving out and there should be a very very slight gap between that 
and it will put it in there there so on this area here and here is where we're looking for our gap so you're putting your feeler gauges in between there not on the raised piece not there a lot of people think that it should be the raised piece it's not you're shimming it um, is the gearbox shim there so not on the raised part on the flat part where the shim goes around so you're after the gap between that and the shim in fact if I get a couple of feet again out yeah I've got a couple out already so if I show you where we're trying to shim into um, what have we got yeah we'll, we'll do a one so 0 0.1 that one at the moment so I'm going to go for a 0 0.1 just for demonstration purposes to show you where to put so we're going in there on top of the shim and there not there there right the gear the gears are they have not cleaned them but they're in and they're slightly proud of the end of the lay shaft it's really hard to show you that but um if i can do do your thumb your nail you can feel it's proud that's so it doesn't lock and they're free to rotate Oh, let me see if I can just find the, the washer for their stroke shim. I found the standard one. I don't want any of them fall out, basically. So... goes on the end there and then we put our two shim in uh, give it a wipe so that it's clean and what we really should have done was just give the the gearbox a clean up but I'll be taking it apart again anyway and we'll just stick the shim on the end and leave our bearing in in the end our roller bearing is greased up anyway and then just stick these back in and tighten them down and give that a tap. What we can do is just use the nuts and not, not use the washers at the moment and tighten them down. The, uh, the plate's not on level at the moment so let me just get the, the hammer and stick it under the engine to give it a lift up so that the uh, the engine is level I'll take these bits out and we can just manually just do them up bit by bit and they will actually fall oh that one's come off that's actually back to front it's not I can see the names on there Oh, 
other two. So rather than force it, what I'm going to actually do <coughs> is just give the the end just a little tap with a, a hammer. Closing up the gap on the shim. Still turning nice and freely. Right, I'm just going to do these by hand at the moment. Let's say we've got no washers on. You just do these in a crisscross pattern. So that one, that one, them two, them two. You can do them any uh, way you want, basically. You can go that one, 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 or that one, that one. As long as they're all nice and tight and run evenly. Let's just get my socket set out. And you say, I'm not going overboard on this at all. Knock the camera there. Uh, let's just stick and what we do then we'll just see what sort of gap we've got. Right, that's on. That's on. That's on. I'm just going to give that another tap, make sure it's on. Make sure it ro rotates nice and freely, which it does. That does seem very, very loose. in the wrong way. Just see what sort of gap we've got at the moment. All right, so we'll get our feeler gauge, <clears throat> and the maximum we're after is 0 0.3, 0 0.25. So 0 0.3 is the maximum we're after, and I can tell you now by feeling that that's a massive gap that I've got there. So 0.3. Give them a bend. Um, no, that's not. That's that surprised me. That is because that's actually less. That's that is about as tight as I can get that in. It seems to be. No, it is. It's bigger than that. I can feel it now. Yeah. So let's see what it is. 0.5. Let's call it one. Try a one first. I can't get the one in. I can get a bit more. Right, so one won't go in at all. Right. 
So what have we got? What about 0 0.5? 0 0.5 is not getting in there. It's best to bend them a little bit like that because there's not a, a vast amount of space that's not going even going in under there and what about a point four six seven eight nine don't need them uh, one Five, not point four, top one, and just again, I'll just give that a bend like so. That is dead tight. So, right, so we've got a, a point four. So if you think of it, we've got 2.4 gap, more or less. So we need a one around 2.5. Um, unfortunately for me, all the writings come off of them. So I'm going to have to use my um, calipers and, uh, and measure them. The writings come off of it. It says two something, but what it says, I don't know that's quite thick so let me just get my calipers out we'll work out how, how much that is Uh, keep the battery out when I'm not using it otherwise I find that they discharge when you come to use it your battery's gone I'll just put the battery in there and zero zero it and then I just need to run that open I'm trying to do this so you can see it So 2.1 2 2.17 2 2.17 so we can try that and see where it gives us a gap so I'm just going to turn that off and leave it back in its box so again we'll just take the gearbox end plate off and it'll show you how tight that is This um, next one should basically be good enough. I'll explain to you why. So if we just take the sockets again and take the, uh, the nuts off. They are tight. so much quicker and just take them off again and again we have to wiggle this off and if this is the reason why I say don't put the Christmas tree in yet because you're constantly pulling this and that off you'd need the extractors six mil screws etc pushing in there whereas because we uh, we're not doing it that way it's easier to pull this off screws out of the way because I don't want them knocking on the floor 
bolt uh, nut sorry even and we'll get our sockets out of the way and then what we want to do then again is wiggle that I mean that's more or less coming straight off in my hand um, unbelievably easy there we go I can feel that won't take long to come off at all now if you add the Christmas tree in there you work you know it's it's just a pain in the backside worming it on and off all right so we're off and we want that shim which is a two I just want to put that back in its bag one that's two that one and put it back in with the rest of them um, I don't know if the next one is thicker or not it's so hard to tell when there's zero zero point something and like I say it's just a shame that the uh, that the writings come off of them but uh, hey ho so we'll put this one on now which is a 2.17 now I can already see that's higher and then we'll stick our gearbox end plate back on again and wiggle it in they should be able to just tap it so that the nuts going to stick four on for simplicity we don't need the six do we so if I put two on the outside two on the inside you'll catch what I'm doing anyway and then we'll uh, check our shim gaps again I'll just stick two on here one on there and one on there Just tighten them up by hand to start with. Extension on. I'll say this gearbox then is going to come out cleaned up prior to putting in so we'll just tighten that tighten that tighten that and tighten that and let's just see what gap we've got now and spin that around a bit more so you can see more what's going on so 0.3 is a maximum uh, not them ones let's try 0.3 Hopefully we can't get in with that one. So 0.3. Yeah, that's not going in. So we already, 0.3 is the maximum permitted end float. I mean, I can't even move that. So um, once that won't go in, we know we're within spec unless we haven't got any gap at all. So... Uh, Let's see what we've got. We've got a 0 0.2, see if that will go in. If that does, then we're, you know, I'm quite happy with that. That will do for the shimming. No, nope, that won't go in as well. So we're, we're uh, tighter than 0 0.2. I've got <clears throat> 0 0.15 is the next one. 0 0.15, nope. Nope. Uh, we've got 0 0.1. Yep. Yeah. 0.1. That's just starting to go in, but it's not going in. So we're under 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Mm. That's 
0.05 I think that's the smallest I've got on this um, feeler gauges right so we'll pull that off I've got another one here I'll measure that one <clears throat> that's why they always say to you buy a range of them I, I would have thought that would have been perfect and that off. That off. That off. and I'll just switch again to the screwdriver attachment and just put them nuts again out of the way. That was 2.17, so we're after a slightly thinner one than that. Right, so they're all out, and this hopefully will just come off again by coaxing it. do is um, put a pair of circuit pliers and just push behind, behind the back I mean it has come out quite a bit and then just worm them against the, uh, the screwdriver went on further than uh, than it's ever been on before in its life you know grabbing parts of the lay shaft that have never been grabbed before so to speak but uh, it's coming off anyway like I say to do this with the Christmas tree in is, uh, is a real pain right so we still got our bearing in there and let's go and see you can actually see where it's been rubbing I don't know if you can see the shiny bit there I've got another one I've got probably about five or six different sizes so let's have a look at this one so I'll just give that a wipe again it's always best to keep these shims in uh, coil stop them rusting up all right let's see what we've got here and zero that again and we'll just see what we've got 2.01 um, let's just see where that's going to get us I think I need to be in between them two to be honest so put that in gearbox end plate back on again you can use the appliance of science but most people will do what I'm doing which is just take it steady that always amazes me how that's not that nut it's the one from behind there but whatever and nuts become loose just you know you don't tighten them up right so we'll put these back on again four again and we'll see how tight or loose the gearbox is again I'm not like I say I'm not going for minimum clearance if it's under um, 0.3 that's fine for me this 0.3 is the, the widest gap it just gives you some leeway to um, 
for wear and tear. Obviously the tight ones is going to wear straight away in my opinion. Alright, so I'm just tightening them by hand. Then we'll stick the steel ratchet on and ratchet them up again. see if we can get a 0.4 in no but can we get a 0.3 in we can but not very well it's, it's about half half in and half out so let's see if we can get a a two in there's two, two will be fine, point two that is, not two. I'm zero point two, we'll see that about that one. That's perfect. Well, I'm happy with that. So zero point two zero, well within spec. That's not biting, so we've got our shim worked out on our gearbox. So what I'm going to do is end this now the next one i'm just going to clean up all the gears and show you what to check for on the gears um put the christmas tree in put this gearbox end plate in and we'll call that a, a second video on that and then i'll show you about the clutch the chain um I've, I've not soaked the clutch plates yet because i wasn't expecting the uh the gearbox till monday anyway and uh i've never had a delivery from uh hermes on a on a sunday so as I say, we're just going to take the, the nuts off and end that one. And I say once again, thanks for watching. We're, we're within spec with our gearbox, so that's, that's great news. We can shim it up. I can put the other shims away. Uh, all I need is the flat washer, which goes under the Christmas tree. And put the, the, uh, the roller bearing in. Um, what I, I'm also going to do is just check before I do that. I'm going to put the Christmas tree in and I want to just check the end float on my um, clutch, the outer bell, and the spider. Make sure there's not tons of play that way. Um, I'll do a video on that as well, show you that. So I'm just going to take off this and then I'm going to clean up the gears, which I'll show you what to look for on the gears as well. Um, oil them up. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching on this one and keep your eyes peeled. We'll get moving and uh, start putting this gearbox in properly.